Good morning. You join me today on my Tench campaign for 2022. It's late May now. You can see I'm wrapped up. It's still that chilly wind. Um, I did a little bit of time on this venue last year, caught a few fish, but nothing massive. This year, I've started to put a bit more time in, although I'm very limited just to early mornings, probably six or seven hours from first light. So it's never gonna be a massive campaign and I'm not expecting big hits, but the fish have graced my net so far. It was an early start, late April, and a lot of the fish are, are showing at distance, but to date I've had six or seven tench I'm averaging maybe one a session, which on this venue is good because it is vast, it's massive. I've never ever fished a lake this big. It's gin clear, it's got loads of features on it. There are other anglers so I'm having a slip into certain swims, some days good ones, other days not so good. And I'm quite consistent, a couple of blanks at the start, the most I've had in the morning is three and to date I've had two nines. So my target is to beat my personal best to 10.5, but I am running out of time because I'm gonna have a two weeks holiday soon and I've got this feeling they're gonna really be going for it. Fishing the worm kebab, if you've seen my YouTube past videos, you will see that I've done a video completely on that. Feature finding as well. So if you're interested in your tent fishing, you're approaching a new water, then have a look at some of the past videos they'd be of interest to you, especially looking for fish with your eyes, finding them, locating them, and then the rigs I use. But I will uh, show you a few of the fish I've caught so far, and fingers crossed that before I go away that those tents will really get their heads down and one of those big ladies will turn up and make me a happy angler. But with two nines, including a 9.9 male, which is massive, and I know this venue does some massive tench, uh, fingers crossed that sooner or later a big one will come along and make me a very, very happy angler. Well, you can see from the smile on my face that I'm a very, very happy man. It's my first tench, the tench campaign this spring. Um, it's my fourth morning here. Did a bit of time last year few but none as big as this one come to a new swim it just feels like when the wind's pushing in your face and uh, you've seen a couple of tent rod will be about 200 yards and then before you even got the second rod out just after baking up you put the first rod out set the bob in and the old alarm screams and then this absolute colossal tent comes along she weighs nine pound three my biggest, one of my biggest ever tench. I'm looking for to be my 10.5 this, uh, this spring, but oh my god, could even get the second god out. New swim, new area, and uh, the worm kebab does the business again. Thank you, darling, you really made my tench season already. Even if I don't catch them anymore, anything bigger, this is just such a rewarding fish. Thank you, darling, you've really made a uh, today and probably the whole of the spring. Well the same rod's not been out that long and uh, I was thinking that was a quick bite. Sometimes you don't want a quick bite because it sort of fools you that you're going to get lots and nothing else happens but I just put the rod back out. It's been out about 20 minutes. Same rod. Just pour myself a cup of tea. And tension number two's turned up. This one's scrapped like hell. I thought it was uh, going to be a lot bigger. Seven pound two. So uh, still another cracking fish and a uh, fantastic start to the tench campaign this year. I just hope they keep coming because uh, I'm really looking forward to the next few weeks. Well, I wasn't quite sure whether it was going to happen today. It's been a real grueler of a tench season so far. But uh, after a couple of early pike, I thought it's just not going to happen. And then a rod ripped off. I thought this has got to be a carp. I just could not stop it. 
and probably my biggest ever male at nine pound nine ounces it's just slipped into the net you can see a proper old warrior split tail or split split pecs had a bit of its tail missing a few scars about but an absolute brute beat me up absolutely made my session it's really difficult just getting one fish out of each session so uh, just to get one was absolutely superb the rods are back out and i'm hoping for another one but uh if i don't get another one i'm going home a very happy angler thank you mate you've made my day well the tench session or season just gets better i don't know if you can hear the wind it's absolutely blowing a hooli got here early met my mate chris at about 20 to 4 20 to 4 was it a nice and early, dropped in a swim, winds blown in our face, everything looked good, got the baits out, sat there for the best part of four or five hours, nothing happened. And then uh, when you least expect it, one of the rods has ripped off and I had a small fish about just over six pound male. Was beginning to think when are the females going to turn up and about half eleven I suppose. I'm just thinking this isn't going to happen i'm happy with that one fish and then one of the rods is gone and i picked it up and the other rod's going i'm thinking that's a bit strange must have picked up that other rod but no two come along at once the smaller one in front weighs just uh pretty much seven pound on the the nose this one a bit lively just goes just over nine pound nine one so what with the nine nine yesterday a nine three a couple of weeks ago and this one at nine one absolutely mint fish the last one was a bit of a bruiser but these are absolutely mint so uh the rods are back out i'm just hoping uh, that double that i'm after turns up sooner or later but uh yeah one happy man Well, we're just coming up to bite time, which is on this venue about half past 10, 11 o'clock. So I'm just going to refresh my baits, get them back out, and hopefully I'll get a tench or two in the next hour or two. But before I do that, let me just run through the tackle I'm using. Very important, everything has to be powerful. I'm using the Fox Kevlar Barbel multi-tip rods. Beautiful rods, quite old, expensive in their day, but they last the time an absolute joy to use and I've got the 175 tip added so that just gives me loads and loads of power in the middle reaches it allows me to cast the sort of 10 to 16 wraps that I tend to fish at and more importantly if that fish goes into the marginal sort of bank side um, snags which are either side of every swim on this venue I can put the pressure in bend into that fish and hopefully turn it before danger um, the reels are just little shimano 4000s probably could do with slightly bigger reels here but i'm not casting that far and they're loaded with some brilliant line that you need to have a look at and that is the browning black magic gold line this is 0.27 of a diameter but its actual breaking strain is 12.6 pounds so as you can see it's a really low diameter line for the breaking strain and that low diameter just allows me to cast those few extra yards that easier especially in the wind and on this venue with over 100 acres or about 100 acres of water when it blows in your face you need every little edge you can get so the black magic gold powerful line abrasion resistance and again if I've got that fish on and it's going towards a snag I can just use the rod and the powerful break and strain in the line to turn that fish and just coming down to the business end I'm using 0.75 meters of lead core 
three reasons. One, to pin it down and make it as stealthy as possible. Two, if I hook a tension, it goes in a weed bed. This acts as a little saw. It just cuts the, the, the weed and you can get it moving again. And um, the third one is I started using it as an uptrace because nowadays with the cormorant problems wiping out the silverfish, anything that moves out there is being picked up by pike. And this acts as an uptrace. So if a pike picks up your bait, which has happened here, um, you're not going to get bitten off on your main line and wind in a frail line, a limp line. So you'll get your feeder back even if your hook link goes. I've got two float stops, a little decoy, mini swivel and taper sleeve. I've got a four to five inch hook link made of nine pounds Senex fluorocarbon. Absolutely superb, another little edge. Use your fluorocarbon if you can. Just check your knots, moisten those knots before you bed them down. Size 10, micro barbed, talon tip, gardener talon tip, great hook, little beak point, razor sharp hook point. Once they go in, they don't come out. And I like to trap my worm worms between two buoyant casters and then just uh, use a little bait stop there. So um, yep you could use the little um, quick stops but I find that that's all right when you're fishing at sort of up to sort of eight wraps or marginal but sometimes that little needle and that little sleeve pierces the worms and make them quite delicate so if you're going to start using casting like 16 wraps a uh, really thin bait and needle, fine bait and needle, trap them between two plastic buoyant casters gives a little bit of kind of buoyancy to your bait and that absolutely does the job for me so don't go in under gunned I'm not going in over gunned with carpfish because I just want to enjoy my fishing as well so uh, rod very important mainline very important reason why I'm using lead core sharp reliable hook and a slightly different way of actually mounting your worms so uh, give it a go get out there and enjoy your tench fishing well I was hoping to be signing off with a really big tench this spring but unfortunately time's been quite limited um, I've come back off holiday best part of two weeks and uh, unfortunately I caught Covid put me down for probably another week as you can probably hear I'll probably be coughing in a minute it's got on my chest I'm not feeling too good so uh, the time when I most wanted to be out just didn't happen so I just thought I'd come down to one of my favourite venues, as people will know, Frencham Great Pond. And uh, it's not been an easy morning, but um, I think I've had four of these now. The worm kebab outscoring the maggot heli rig. So uh, it's not been an easy spring. As I said, time's been limited. If I put more time in, I'm sure I would have caught a really big tench. Uh, came close, 9.9 nine male was the biggest. So a uh, lot to learn and uh, just need to find that time next spring and uh, get back on it and catch a few big fish. But for now, I'm going to call it a day. That's my last tench of the spring, unless my rods go again this morning, which I doubt because the rain clouds them forming so I'm going to call it a day. had a bit of a senior moment this morning when I got in the lake in my chest wade as I slipped on an underwater uh, branch, ended the flat on my back, wade is full of water so I've sat here in shorts which isn't brilliant when you're not feeling too good so uh, I'm going to call that a day and uh, looking forward to the next adventure and that's going to be on my favourite river which is the River Thames. So uh, Keep watching, there's going to be a few little videos coming of what I'm up to. So, uh, yep, see you soon.